Genesis chapter 40 has Joseph interpreting two very important prisoners' dreams. In fact, it's going to be a little while, but God is shown to be at work here, and this is going to be the event that eventually is going to be the springboard for Joseph out of an Egyptian prison. So, beginning in Genesis chapter 40, verse 1, it says that it came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. So they were in custody for a while. Now, the, these uh, first three verses, or these first four verses, tell us that Joseph, Joseph isn't in just any prison. He's in a prison for, I guess, what we would call VIPs, very important persons or very important prisoners. The more well-to-do people ended up in prison here, like the chief butler and the chief baker for Pharaoh. Uh, The chief butler would have had a very similar role to a cupbearer. You might remember Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11, he was the king's cupbearer. The chief butler would have, would have had a very similar role to that, making sure that, that everything the king or the pharaoh ate was good for him to eat, that it wasn't poisoned, it wasn't going to kill him. That was the chief, probably a very important part of the chief butler's job. So we aren't told, though, why pharaoh was angry with these two servants. But whatever it was, it was significant enough to throw them into prison with the possibility of death looming overhead. So whatever it was, it was a pretty bad deal. Somebody was going to face death, and these two guys are under a lot of suspicion. And while they're in prison, they are put under the care of Joseph. He was their servant, essentially, while they were in prison. So these are very important people who are close to Pharaoh. So in case they get out of prison and kind of get their jobs back, no doubt the keeper of the prison would want them to carry a good report of their care back to Pharaoh. The keeper of the prison, just in case these guys get out and get back on Pharaoh's good side, the keeper of the prison does not want Pharaoh to hear, Pharaoh, while I was in prison, we were shamefully treated by the keeper of that prison. Keeper of the prison does not want that that kind of news getting back to Pharaoh, and so he assigns Joseph to them. Joseph is not guarding them. Joseph is acting as their personal servant while they're in prison. Remember, these are very important people. No doubt they are used to perhaps having servants of their own. Perhaps they're very like Potiphar. Potiphar was essentially the head of Pharaoh's bodyguards, secret service, These guys are in similar roles in different departments. These are very important people and are used to probably having a lot of people serve them, you know, and do whatever for them. So while they're in prison, probably as a favor, probably to make sure they carry a good report of their care back to Pharaoh, the keeper of the prison assigns Joseph to them to serve them while they're in prison. The text continues and says, Then the butler and the baker, the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream, both of them, each man's dream in one night and each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came into them in the morning, looked at them, and saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, We each have had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. So, one night, while they're in prison, both the butler and the baker have a dream. Now, during this time, especially during this time, people believed that dreams were how God or how the gods communicated with mankind. And so the butler and the baker, they're sad because they believe their gods are trying to tell them something, but there's no one to interpret their dream. So they're thinking they're so sad, they're distraught. God's trying to tell me something, or 
whatever their god was, which the Egyptians had a lot of idol gods, the gods are trying to tell me something, but no one is here to tell me what the gods are trying to tell me. So uh, a commentator, uh, Leopold, mentioned, especially about how Joseph reacts with them here, wrote, for Joseph to notice this at once, their sadness, indicates his kindness in attending upon the men who have been allotted to him. They have been entrusted to Joseph, and Joseph took all such commissions very seriously. Therein lay a large measure of the secret of his success. Had Joseph not inquired of them why they were so gloomy, the entire chain of events that followed might have been rendered impossible. In other words, he points out something very interesting here. Because Joseph treats them with kindness, because of that, that sort of sets in play, sets in effect the whole chain of events that eventually will lead to him being set free from prison. Because he was kind to people he did not have to be kind to. When Joseph asks and they tell him, Joseph credits God with the power of interpreting dreams. Now, that's a very interesting statement that challenged the religious beliefs of the Egyptians. The Egyptians thought that interpreting dreams would have required a magician or a priest, you know, one of Pharaoh's wise men. But Joseph tells them, look, the power belongs to God. So anyone he chooses can interpret dreams. That, by the way, is a very similar statement that Daniel made many years later in Daniel 4, verse 26 through 28, when Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar, look, the power is not in me. There's nothing nothing special about me. God's the one who has the power to interpret these dreams. So uh, very interesting what Joseph tells them here. And then I guess they decide, well, that's good enough for them. So then, picking up in our text, then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded, its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. So the chief butler's dream, it involved his job. He saw a vine very quickly bloom and very quickly bring forth ripe grapes. He takes the grapes, he presses the grapes into Pharaoh's cup, getting fresh grape juice, and he gives the cup to Pharaoh. So Joseph responds and says to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. But remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. So Joseph tells him, interpreting this dream, not because Joseph is special or somehow had the power in himself, but God is the one working through Joseph here. The dream meant in three days, Pharaoh would restore the chief butler to his former position. You're going to get your job back. And Joseph begs the chief butler to remember him when he got out of prison. Joseph is hoping that the chief butler would be able to sympathize with his wrongfully being in prison. As it turns out, it seems the way that the chief butler's case is going to go, he was in prison for something that he had not done. Pharaoh figures that out and restores him. So Joseph is hoping, look, you know what it is to be in prison wrongfully. Have pity on me. Have compassion on me. I am also wrongfully been put in this prison. So the text goes on. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. The chief butler, or the chief baker, excuse me, told his dream after hearing the good interpretation of the chief butler's dream. In his dream, he had three white baskets on his head, and the top basket had all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds come, and they eat all of the baked goods out of the basket on his head. And Joseph answers and says, 
This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Once again, three days is the time span, but for the chief baker, he's going to be executed by having his head cut off and hung up on a tree for the birds and animals to devour. And our text tells us, Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. So it all happened exactly as Joseph had said. At Pharaoh's birthday, three days later, he restores the chief butler and he executes the chief baker. But the chief butler, for whatever reason, does not remember Joseph and he does not remember what Joseph had done for him. As we think about this chapter, it's a pretty short chapter today. We think about maybe a couple lessons from this chapter. The chief butler forgetting Joseph it serves as a reminder for us not to place our trust in people, in humanity, because people sometimes, even maybe despite their best intentions, are going to let us down. But while everyone may have forgotten Joseph, what we're going to find out as we keep reading is God has not forgotten Joseph. God is the one to depend upon, is the one to trust. Because even if everyone else in this life lets us down, even the ones that we love and care about most, God has not forgotten us. God will not let us down. We're reminded of that in Genesis chapter 40. But also another lesson that shows up here in Genesis chapter 40, and it's going to show up quite often, especially especially in God's people's dealings with kings, foreign kings and their court. But the lesson of God's wisdom is always greater than man's wisdom. We're going to see that play out several times here in the book of Genesis. You're going to see that play out again when God brings his people out of Egypt in the book of Exodus. You're going to see that play out multiple times in the book of Daniel. God's wisdom is always greater than than man's wisdom. Even the smartest people, even the most wise people on the face of this earth, their wisdom, their intelligence is as nothing compared to God and what he can do and what he knows. So I appreciate you studying Genesis chapter 40 along with me. Joseph interprets two dreams of two servants of Pharaoh. In the next chapter, Genesis 41, Pharaoh is going to have two dreams himself, and God is going to deliver Joseph out of the Egyptian prison using the dreams of Pharaoh. But we'll get to that next time. Until then, I appreciate you studying along with me, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.